Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Uh, we are debuting something on the show that I've never done before. It is one-on-one. This is uh, this is where I get a chance to do what I love to do, and that's interview people that I'm a huge fan of. And uh, I'm no bigger fan of anybody than this next lady because she is on the cooking channel. And I noticed this uh, this person a, a long time ago, and it's like nothing else on television. It's a combination of wonderful, wonderful cooking, a woman who uh, the camera adores, and somebody who has, I think, a background in comedy. We'll find out more about that. She's Nadia G. The show is Bitchin' Kitchen, and uh, she joins me right now on One on One on the Mike O'Mara Show. Nadia, it is a pleasure to have you here. How are you? Whoa, what an introduction. I wish I could wake up to that every day. I'm doing great. How are you? Well, you know, since you said it that way, you know, my God, wake up to that every day. I will do my very best. <laughs> As as a as a fifty three year old man, not to my greatest fear in this in 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 this interview, Nadia, was not to come across as a dirty old man at fifty three. Yeah, well, you know, you did you so far so good. Good, I, I I will I will <laughs> I will try to be as respectful as I possibly can. I uh, I love the cooking channel, and the main reason I I love the show, I think you're you're the best thing on it. It's like no other cooking show on uh, television. And for those of you that uh, have not checked out uh, Nadia G's Bitch and Kitchen, uh, what are the regular times that it runs on uh, the cooking channel? Because I know they jump around a little bit on those shows. Yeah, well, you can catch uh, Nadia G's Bitch and Kitchen on Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and so, you uh, and, and, and you're also online too, right? You've got a presence online as well. Correct. We've got uh, Twitter at Bitch and Kitchen, Facebook slash Bitch and Kitchen. You just Google Bitch and Kitchen, and <laughs> you'll find us. And you're Canadian, right? I am Canadian. I'm from Montreal. I love Canadians. Uh, so that's in Quebec. It's like French Canada. And, um, hello? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, <laughs> what, do you have a little cranial cramp there? I wasn't sure what was going on. I was waiting. I was being no, a polite interview here. My alarm just went off uh, for this interview, in fact. Oh, so yeah. We're, just, we're uh, doing do, it do, early. Do, 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 do. You know, I, I don't know what it is. The first time I, I think that the first time I saw the show, um, I, I was taken aback by, uh, the fact that it was, it was so wonderfully edgy because you, you deal with things like hangovers and relationships, stuff you would not see on a standard cooking show. You, your comedy informs the, the whole idea of the kick of the cooking show, right? I mean, did it, did it start with comedy or did it start with food? How'd the whole thing start? Well, it's a nice mix. You know, I started doing sketch comedy and comedy songs in early 2000. And, uh, and I, I did, uh, I did a bunch of different stuff. I had a song called I'm Never Drinking Like That Again. Uh, <laughs> I forgot she drinks I, uh, also. She drinks. I, did I forgot this that. One sketch, uh, called Easy Break, which was a stick on herpes sores that make breaking up more simplex. <laughs> now, bada bing. <laughs> needless to say, there wasn't much money in, in making those sketches. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I was trying hard and, and I was getting a little, a little discouraged in doing what most people do when they're down. Down and depressed, they watch a shit ton of Food Network. Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> so I said to myself, wouldn't it be awesome to, to take the comedy and mix it with the food? You know, I grew up in a food-obsessed Italian family, uh, so I've always loved to cook, but I never really considered it a career. I considered it just a, a necessity. And, uh, and then it just hit me. I'm like, yes, man, mix the comedy in with the food, and there we have a uh, bitch in kitchen. And I think, uh, you know, I know, I'm, I know it sounds like I'm blowing smoke during this entire interview, but I think the thing that I absolutely, the, the final tip in for Bitch and Kitchen when I watched it the first couple of times is that the food absolutely rocks. You put the food out. I mean, it's not, it's not always the healthiest food in the world, but I mean, as a fat guy, Jesus Christ, you make this food and it's, it's awesome. And, uh, and really for any cooking show, I think no matter whether it's comedy or whatever, when you throw in the fact that at the end of the day, People are actually going to pay attention to the recipes, which I know they do on your show. That makes it that makes it a special program. Oh, totally. You know, the one thing that Bitchin' Kitchen did for lifestyle entertainment is we actually made it entertaining. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. <laughs> What's cool, what's cool about it is that the recipes are a hundred percent solid. I mean, anything from gnocchi poutine to my grandmother's penne al forno. Like, I'm not a classically trained chef, but let me tell you, some of these home recipes, uh, the ones from my family, I pit 
any woman in my family against the three-star Michelin. So you don't need <laughs> to be a professional chef to cook up a great meal. And that's the cool thing about Bitch and Kitchen is that, you know, you, you, you kind of learn, uh, learn how to cook without feeling like you're learning how to cook. You're actually having a good time. We hear, we hear from so many people, this is the, the only cooking show my husband would ever watch. Uh, you know, teenagers are into this show. And that's because we're, we're making it fun. And, um, and then, you know, you're in your kitchen and you're like, oh, yeah, well, m- maybe I should saute the garlic a little longer to get that nice golden color. And you just kind of remember these things uh, from from the back of your mind as you were, you know, laughing your ass off watching Bitch and Kitchen. And, and there's a, uh, you know, the, the whole bad girl image is, uh, you know, on your bio. They talk about that. When you watch the show. Uh, that comes across, but it comes across in a comedic way. You know, you use the, the terms. I, listen, I watch the show. I, I'm not five inches from the television, but I know you say things like schiavata or whatever the hell it is. The, uh, the, the names you have. You, what is that from your Italian heritage? Those, those words you use that I don't know what they mean, but I love it when you use them. Where, where's that all come from? Totally. So, so yeah, this, this, this is the Italian slang and you have words like, uh, schiaff. <laughs> so schiaff in Italian means slap and you use it in the same way that you do in English. You could say, you know, uh, hurry up and slap some pasta on that plate. Or, uh, if you don't put the pasta on the plate right now, I'm going to give you a couple of schiaff. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I dig that. And, uh, you've been, how long have you been, how many seasons have you done Bitch and Kitchen? Three seasons of Bitch and Kitchen, and uh, we we did some early stuff online because we started online. We mm-hmm. started as an online comedy cooking show. And you respect the world of us, uh, even uh, even us former broadcasters that uh, were at the very top of their careers and now exist in their own living room. I appreciate that, Nadi. <laughs> so now Sariza's saying thank you for coming on the show. We uh, we like that. Now you you do this show, and uh, it's the bad girl image, and. I also know you you have to be aware of uh, the fact that there is a tremendous sex appeal to your show. You're out there. You know you've got guys that are five inches away from the television. You even had win, <laughs> win a dinner date with Nadia, which was probably the funniest single moment on your show. The awkward <laughs> dinner you have with that guy made me laugh. You get it. You get that joke. And, uh, do you get a lot of, uh, you get a lot of twisted fan mail? Oh, yeah, yeah. I get twisted fan mail, absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of the marriage proposals. Uh, so I just tell these guys, I'm like, listen, just send two carrots to P.O. Box 9015. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, other weird things that, that, that fans have done. I, I actually signed a pair of panties. Oh my God! Well, you know, yeah. hey, in the life, there's that group of people too. Let's let we love them. We love the lesbians on this show, absolutely. Totally. Totally. And, um, uh, you know, we, we've had uh, fans get tattoos of the Bitch and Kitchen logo. And you got a lot of ink is, yourself. Uh, uh, for people that don't know, you've got a lot of ink on you. One uh, on your arm, you've got, uh, hung, do I sound, am I starting Mark? Am I starting to sound no, like a stalker? No, you sound okay right now. I was actually going to ask her to repeat that mailing address so I could go ahead and send that, that ring to her. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you know, it really is, you've got the, the hungry, you've got a lot of ink and, but not too much ink, uh, you know, but when did you start getting tattoos? Wow, man. You know, I'm from Montreal where the legal age is just a suggestion. So <laughs> I probably got my first tattoo when I was 15 mm-hmm. uh, on my wrist. I have about 11 tattoos right now. And you can separate them into two genres. You've got the young and inebriated collection, <laughs> <laughs> which happens to include like some lizard uh, I have a tramp stamp, of course. Uh, nice. from the 90s, but you know what? I know, you know there's what a I lot mean? of my audience right now that just enjoyed that little detail, which uh, I, I just give you a ding for that one. That's it. I'm, t- I'm, re- I'm trying so goddamn hard not to be a dirty old man. You're with doing this great, Mike. I really am. Yeah, I really, but I'm such. Kind I'm, of, kind of. I'm borderline I mean, stalker. New stuff. Yeah, that's true. You know true. the new tattoos with yes. the hungry. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've got the the band around my my right forearm, which I designed myself. All the tattoos that I designed myself, I enjoy. Well, let's talk. Uh, uh, let's 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 talk specifically about you because I know as a fan, if I was listening to an interview of Nadia G, I would get to the bitch and kitchen stuff, which I've done. Mm-hmm. I would talk about the comedy, which I've done. But then I would talk about the ABCs of you, 
Nadia, because I'm sure. I am just curious about you. You do have guys on the show. You have your uh, your cast of characters that come on, and uh, you know the one guy that uh, puts the the whipped cream on his naked body and and all that. But uh, you know, I I'll tell you as a regular fan, as a legitimate fan, I wonder when I watch those guys, I'm like, hmm. Is one of those guys her boyfriend? Is she has she hooked up with any of those guys on the show? So that's my question. No, well, you know, uh, none of those guys are my boyfriend. Um, but but I do have to say that I met uh, my true love many years ago, uh, vodka. <laughs> oh, that's so, it. oh my God! Nice. You know, I, I'm taken. Yes, sir. You know? that's awesome. I'm giving her a cheer. Standing ovation on that one. <laughs> oh, I, you know what? I just read the other day, and I don't know if this is on your show, or whether it's online or whatever. Because I, I read, I do actually, Nadia, I do my research. I really do. I do my research, and it said candy infused vodka. Where this mm-hmm. is your tip, and it, you said it's like one of the best things you've ever come up with. Where you put the candy, actually a real candy that you love. In uh, in some vodka, and you let it rest for a few days, and it's incredible, right? Yeah, it's that simple. It was actually really interesting. I wasn't sure if it was going to work, and it really does. Uh, you know, if you like gummy bears, you just grab a, a, a cup of gummy bears, you put in, a, you know, like two cups of vodka, <laughs> close it up, and let it rest. You shake it three times a day for two, three days, and you, you, you then you strain it. I love and this woman. I'm telling you, that vodka is going to taste just like gummy bears oh my or God. whatever kind of candy it is that you like. So you like so the person, uh, the significant other in your life is vodka. Does that mean you're single? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm single. Oh. I like to keep it that oh way. Oh, you like to keep it that way. Do you? Uh, is there anybody uh, in in the horizon? Do you do you date frequently, or do you uh, just keep it single all the time? I keep it single. I have a lot of fun with with my girlfriends. You know, I, it's uh, I don't know relationships. I travel a lot. You know. But you know, you do uh, for a lot of people out there, men and women. You are the perfect woman. You know that. Aw, thank you. But That's you so look sweet. like, do you have any kind of temper? Do you ever kick anybody's ass? Because you look like you could kick somebody's ass. <laughs> I do have a bit of a temper, i got to say. But one thing with me is I get over things quickly. Mm-hmm. So I'll get really mad, I'll let it all out, and then half an hour later I'm like, all right, let's go get some in and out. That's funny. Mike's just like that. <laughs> no, I have no <laughs> temper. I have no temper whatsoever. So where uh, do you see it going? Do you see uh, Bitchin' Kitchen? Uh, are there any other projects on the horizon, stuff that you want to do, places you want to go, things you want to do, hairdos you want to show us on TV? What's uh, what's next <laughs> for Nadia? Hey, I, lo- hey, well, I love the one, one the one where you had, where you had the, you know, look, see, now listen, before I ask, before I mention this Nadia please just I, I want you to make sure do not think of me as a 53 year old uh, overweight dirty old man but I got to tell you when you did that little shaved head thing on the side that that do you had remember that show oh yeah well that, that is my hair I've had that hair for two years now it's like that right now oh so you just comb over the part that uh, hangs over the part that's really super short yeah, you know, I have a lot of hair, so I could stand to, oh. to lose a whole bunch of it, oh my and, uh, and it doesn't really show, but oh. yeah, it's, it's not quite That's... a comb over. Oh, my God. So you can, <laughs> but, uh, just not yeah. to be stalker fan, but you can take that hair, and you can move it back out of the way, and you'll still have that little, like, shave spot right up on the side where you got kind of the crew cut thing happening. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Oh yeah, my yeah, yeah. God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. down practically to the skin. Oh my mm. God! That is so cool. <laughs> okay, you're you're now. So, all right, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> uh, you know, but that's it. And uh, you, you know what? What I, I totally lost my train. Uh, yeah, of that was a little distracting. Well, you know, it would have been an easier interview in my 30s. <laughs> I, what, what can I say? I just all I'm thinking is uh, not being uh, you know inappropriate here. And you're based out of where? You based out of uh, Brooklyn, New York? Is that where you're based out of? No, 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 no. So we shoot the show in Montreal. Oh, you shoot it in I'm Canada, in too. Angeles. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm in Los Angeles. And I, in fact, I have a, another cool show coming up. Uh, we're actually shooting it in a couple of weeks. I'm not quite sure when it's going to air yet, but it's a travel show. Ooh. So I'm excited about that. Me and my crew are going to be hitting the road um, in, in, in America and uh, causing a whole bunch of trouble. And stuffing our face holes. Do, do you uh, do you follow hockey? Being a Canadian, I'm sure you've been asked that a million times. 
Yeah, you know what? I'm not crazy about sports. I have to be honest. For me, like, all I see is a bunch of dudes <laughs> kicking various balls around or throwing <laughs> balls around. I don't quite get it. You know, it's it's not that entertaining. Maybe if the guys took their shirts off or something, they got to add a little something extra to sports. <laughs> In the, the next you know, bit of or whatever that is. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, listen, uh, the the show's based on, I love Montreal, incidentally. It's a gorgeous city, uh, Montreal. And uh, the travel show, I think anything you do, you, you it's going to be fantastic and if you do get to washington dc if you are doing a travel show who do, who do we have duff goldman in here was he oh uh, yes he, yes we he have, actually yeah. he, uh, duff goldman you know the ace of cakes dude he came to oh the, absolutely yeah, yeah yeah duff is awesome he was in my um, my christmas music video awesome uh was that the one about the hi hating hipsters was that that one uh no 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 brooklyn hipster brunch is one of the newer <laughs> videos where we take the piss out of hipsters but we did a uh, we did a christmas song last year which was really cool duffs in it guy fear epic meal time is in it uh the the vegan black metal chef that guy's hilarious is very funny um so you know you got duff rapping and then singing along to show me your ding 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 <laughs> dong well you are invited if you get if your travels get you to dc we'd love to have you into the uh, living room studio but uh i think it's uh it's the edgiest and the funniest cooking show with great food also that's on there uh, nadia and you're very sweet and you're wonderful and i hope i wasn't uh, too much of a perv during this interview no man no 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 I, I had a wonderful time and definitely if i get down to dc i would love to hang out in the living room stu uh, studio nadia g it's bitch in kitchen check it out sunday nights on uh, cooking channel you rock nadia and a uh, continued success to you thanks so much for joining me on one-on-one -on -one. thank you mike bye-bye